or I will not go on that network. They can go to hell, all of them. They're the worst thing that ever hit America. They're worse than CNN, and I'll tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because we know what CNN is. We know what MSNBC is. They don't hide it. They don't hide their tendencies towards socialism, do they? But Fox does. Fox pretends it's different. But it isn't any different. It's part of the government media complex. Part of the new Reich that has emerged in America and the world. Shame on all of those leg crossers. Lawrence, WBAP, welcome to the Savage Nation. Michael, you are so right about Chairman Obama. I lived and worked in China for 20 years, in the late 80s through the 90s and early 2000s. I knew Red Guards. I sat in their homes and opened the shoeboxes of their old armbands and medals, and they told me word for word, blow for blow, what happened. I've been back in the States for three years, and I've been jumping up and down and telling everyone. He, he is playing the Mao Zedong Little Red Book word for word, game for game. We are experiencing exactly the type of propaganda that Mao pushed. And if you want to find one more guy in the Obama administration, look up Ron Bloom, his uh, so-called manufacturing czar, who quoted Mao and said, we believe that power comes from the end of a barrel of a gun. You can find that in your research. But you so, are Lawrence, am I the only one in the media who's ever made this connection? I named him Chairman uh, Obama. You remember that several years ago? Obama, remember? Yes, I do. Is that your creation? Yes. Yes, I created it many, many years ago, Obama. But he is, fo is he not following the exact playbook of one man rule? And cre anyone who is a dissenter is excommunicated and attacked viciously by the vermin in the media? Is that not exactly what Mao did in the early days of his regime? My history and study of history shows exactly that. You are spot on. And here, here's the danger, Lawrence, is it not? It starts with rhetoric, but it doesn't end with rhetoric. The next stage is quite different than this stage, is it not? Yes, it is. We're at the beginning stages, but the, the tentacles are out there and they're deep, and it's going to be very hard to get them out. Right, and that's why they're opposing Trump, because he's not singing from the same playbook, which they think has now become the uh, prayer book of America, the playbook of one-man rule. He is the only one who's saying, no, I'm not playing by your rules. I'm playing by America's rules. I'm not playing by the rule of Mao Zedong under Obama, Obama. I am going to make sure that America is great again, not that I am great again. That's what he's saying, and that's why the vermin in the media are going insane. Listen, I want you to stay on the line because you're the only caller so far who understands this as, uh, more, more so than I do, Lawrence. You must get Lawrence's address. I must send them uh, a government zero and when the book comes out, I want you to get Lawrence's contacts and I want to have him on the show again because I devote a whole chapter to this issue of Mao Zedong, one man rule, the cult of personality, the father of political correctness, which led to the deaths of 45 million Chinese. It didn't start with their deaths. It started with controlling their thoughts. That's how it started. And then when Chinese said, wait a minute, your policies are screwed up. Your, your policies are so bad, it resulted in the deaths of millions of Chinese. They were targeted by Mao Zedong for torture and death because he would have had to admit he's wrong. And like all madmen, they can never admit they're wrong. Mao wouldn't admit he was wrong. He killed his lieutenant who had been with him from the early days, the man who took the long march with him. And he saved the most horrendous torture for his closest ally who tried to turn on him by saying what you've done is wrong you've killed 12 million chinese through your agricultural policies your plans are not working obamacare isn't working whatever you've touched is turned to garbage he didn't kill him right away he waited and he waited and he waited and he saved the worst tortures for him and then to show you how crazy mao Zedong was i want to show you how mad he was he had a film made of his torture in his last days in the prison cell, which he wanted to watch as his once closest friend was tortured to death in the last days of his life, a man who had fought the revolution with him. Just as Castro did to his opponents, just as Hitler did to his opponents, just as Stalin did to his opponents, and God only knows what's going on behind the scenes of this seamless government media complex here in the United States of America. 
Well, it's been a long road with you today, an hour and 45 minutes trying to show you this issue of is Obama a Muslim is not the whole story. It's just the tip of the iceberg because many people are disturbed by his loyalties. They don't know where they lie. The issue is not so much is he a Muslim or is he a Christian. It's which side is he really on? And as I want to I summarize what I said earlier, by definition, he's a Muslim. Unless he has converted to Christianity, I don't know. When did he convert to Christianity? Who converted him to Christianity? Was it Reverend Wright? Well, what form of Christianity? Well, it's liberation theology if he's a Christian. That's why he's in love with this pope, because this pope is a liberation theologist, which is classic Marxism. The pope is a Marxist. Don't ask, is he? What kind of stupid question is that? If every word that comes out of this lunatic's mouth is an expression of the Marxist doctrines, why must you ask the question? Because he's holy? Because he wears a robe and puts a thing on his head? The guy was a bouncer before he became a priest. Read The Red and the Black by Stendhal and you'll know who uh, Mr. Francis is, Pope Francis. It's a shock that so many people are so gullible. And how does it fit into the story of today? Fits in very, very well indeed, but you'll have to put the pieces together yourself because I'm just flat out of time and I'll be right back to finish this hour right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. I know that one in five Americans still think Obama is a Muslim. So when this came up, uh, what, why should you dismiss it? His father, Barack Obama, was a Muslim turned atheist. His stepfather, Lolo Suetro, was a nominal Muslim. So what is he? When did he convert to Christianity? It's an issue that is worth discussing in a Christian, predominantly Christian nation. What do we have to hide the religion of the nation? The founding religion has to be hidden in America. Why is it not hidden in Iran? Because, AC, because atheists, Maoists, run the country. They'd like you to think there is no religion. Brian, line seven. VLK, Kentucky, go ahead, please. Dr. Savage, we also have another example of, um, of a madman who committed genocide against his own people in his year zero policy with Pol Pot. I was hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. My book is called Government Zero. What is year zero? I never heard of that. Year zero was the policy put into place by Pol Pot in Cambodia in 1975 after the Khmer Rouge had uh, taken over control of the government. Uh, Eight million people lived in Cambodia at the time. He and his henchmen over a four-year period killed one-fourth of the population. If you were an intellect, if you were opposed to the party, if you were considered a quote-unquote new person, uh, th there was some... No, I understand he used 10, 12, 13-year-old thugs of the type that you saw burning down Baltimore and Ferguson. I see it for what it is. I know what Holder did and Sharpton and Obama. First you take out the defense cells, the police, and then you go after the people. You think I'm stupid? Now what is year what do you mean by year zero though? What is that? Year zero, what Paul Pot wanted to do was to erase all Cambodian history. Cur ah along the lines of the radical left, the government media complex. There is no America. There's only an America since the snake took power. The serpent took power and America was born. God stay on the line for government zero. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Okay, this man, I like this guy. I want from White Plains. Amen. Okay. We problem in this country it's called muslims we know our current president is one right. you know he's not even an american we need this, question. this, is this man. Is question but anyway 
We have training camps growing where they want to kill us. Mm -hmm. That's my question. When can we get rid of We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that. And a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there. We're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things. So because Donald Trump is open minded because he didn't shut this man down, the new Reich, uh, which I used to call the government media complex, the Maoists who are running the new world order, where there's going to be uh, eventually a one man rule, one supreme ruler of the world who will likely be Obama unless there is divine intervention to stop him. And so the question is, is Obama a Muslim? And of course, we're not allowed to even ask it. That makes us bad people to even ask the question. When if you if you Google the question, is Obama a Muslim, which I just did, it confirms what I've said to you. Here's what they wrote. Maybe uh, Google is now racist. It says, though, Obama is a practicing Christian, and he was chiefly raised by his mother and her Christian parents. His father, Barack Obama Sr., with whom he lived only as a baby, was a Muslim turned atheist. And his stepfather, Lolo Soetro, with whom he lived during his early childhood, was a nominal Muslim. Well, according to Islamic law, he is a Muslim. It's through patrilineal descent. So he obviously converted to Christianity somewhere along the way because he was a devout uh, churchgoer. He went to Reverend Wright's church for 20 years where he learned to hate America and learned to hate everything about America. So he is a Christian of that order. He is a liberation theologist along the order of Pope Francis, which is why he's being invited to America. Now, if one in five Americans or more still think he's a Muslim, is it not a valid discussion point? Tell me the answer, what you think. When did he convert to Christianity? When was he last seen going into a church? And does that really matter? Well, it doesn't really matter. What really matters is where are his loyalties? I question Obama's loyalties. Why? Take a look at what he is doing and what he's done to the military. Let's start with the top, national security. He has decapitated the command structure. He has fired everyone but yes men. He has put in radical lesbians and radical gays to run every branch of the military, at least where he can thus far. Today he appointed the head of the army, civilian appointee, as a gay man. You say, well, that's not bad. Well, what do you mean it's not bad? Is it good? Why is it good to appoint a homosexual to run the army? How does that make the army stronger? Especially when we are fighting Islamo-fascism, which has rather strong feelings about these things. How does that work? Now let's go down the list of things that he has done and is doing. That's what really matters. His religion doesn't really matter. He could be a Muslim, and he could be the Muslim uh, type who is on the side of the equation against uh, radical Islam. I don't know where he stands. He has not destroyed ISIS. Has he taken out ISIS? We have the most powerful military on earth. Why has he not destroyed ISIS? Who was the first in the media to say, do you remember two months ago after they took Mosul? They had a victory parade. It ran about a half a mile long with Toyota trucks with machine guns on them, a long line through the desert. Well, if Bush had seen it, you would see a highway of death. You would have seen charred corpses on top of the Toyota trucks. They wouldn't be doing war cries today. But Obama didn't even fire, have one missile fired at that convoy. That said it all to me. That was the end of the story. That was the end of the, that was the, end of the road for me. It explained everything. So let's see what he's really doing. Iran, Shia nation, he's on their side. ISIS, Sunni terrorist organization, he's on their side. So what is he really doing? Well, you could say it's quite rational. He's pitting Sunni against Shia and he wants them to kill each other. That would be one theory, but I don't think that's the actuality of it. Now let's look at Syria. What's he doing in Syria? Iran, a Shia nation, is a supporter of Assad, the despotic ruler of Syria. Iran and Russia are on the same exact side. They want to take out ISIS because ISIS opposes the Shia theocracy. They want a Sunni theocracy. And which side are we on? We don't know. Obama refuses to really join Russia in this war against ISIS. He's in a quandary there. First, he supported Iran with the nuclear deal. Now that Iran and Russia are unifying as allies against ISIS in Syria to support Assad, suddenly Obama has cold feet. He put on the brakes. So does he really know what he's doing? 
Do you actually have the, do you have the, can you conceptualize that it's a bunch of 